the Treasury Star Parade. Produced under the personal direction of William A. Bajor presents a radio fantasy by Norman Roston, written especially for Mr. Alfred Lunt and Miss Lynn Fontaine, entitled Miss Liberty Goes to Town. Sure is a lot of fog over the harbor this morning. Pretty, all them foghorns. They don't scare the life out of you like them new automobiles. I'd hate to be the Statue of Liberty standing out in the rain all night. But there she is, still standing. Hey. Huh? You notice when we went by? Went by what? The statue. Her arm, you know, holding up the torch. What about her arm? Well, it's supposed to be up, ain't it? I've never seen it no other way that I can remember. Maybe it was the fog, Joe, but when we just passed by, I could have swore her arm was down. Made pretty good time, Bob. Yeah, three hours from Cleveland isn't exactly crawling. I like to sail into New York from this end over the battery. Looks like a big pincushion from here. Hey, there's my girlfriend waiting up for me. See her waving? Hey, no. <laughs> Statue of Liberty's a gal, I mean. I think I'll zoom over and wiggle my wings at her. Here goes. Say, did you see what I think I saw? I could have sworn she wiggled right back at me. Huh? All right, pal. You better let me take her in from here. Skyline looks pretty, don't you think, Mr. Smith? Coming in from Staten Island on the Staten Island Ferry, nothing looks pretty to me. Hmm. Well, it is a kind of suburb, you know. Hmm. Mark my word. Someday they're going to tow that suburb out past Sandy Hook and just leave her there. And I won't be sorry. Might give us a little change in scenery. All I see every morning is the Statue of Liberty and the same old skyline and the... Uh... Say, Mr. Jones, we haven't passed the Statue of Liberty... Yet, did we? Uh, well, I don't recall. You sort of get so used to it. You didn't but we're notice. coming in now. I don't remember passing it. Look over there. Huh? I don't see nothing. It ain't there. The Statue of Liberty used to hang out right there off Governor's Island. Something's happened. Hey, Captain, you up there, call the police. The Statue of Liberty isn't where it used to be anymore. <laughs> Well, now, isn't that a pretty thing to get into the papers? And right under your very nose. Commissioner, as mayor of the city of New York, I want the Statue of Liberty brought back, dead or alive. Maybe she was picked up for the aluminum collection. Well, check up on it. Dredge the harbor. Put an ad in the New York Times. Make a noise suitable to the occasion. Let's have a little sound and fury. Oh, yes, sir. And secretary. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'm going to do some investigating on my own. Call up the fire department and tell them to send over a fire engine right away. <laughs> Calling all harbor police boats. Keep a sharp watch on all harbor traffic. Check up on garbage cows. The mayor's sore, so try and spot that statue. Because if he finds it himself, he'll be mugging all over the evening papers again. That is all. Taxi. Taxi lady, right this way. Let me help you in. Hey. Now, where to, lady? Well, I don't know. Can you just ride a little, please? Sure thing, lady. Uh, there's the button, ma'am, if you like the radio. After this hour, there has been no trace of the missing Statue of Liberty. We return you well, now. Oh, and... nuts. Pardon me for my unrequested intrusion, ma'am, but ain't it a shame about that statue? Yes, I suppose it is. Stranger in town, if you'll pardon my inquisitive attitude. Yes, in a way. Yeah. That's why you don't feel sore about it like we do. I mean, about the statue. She was an institution. Do you think the people will miss her? Miss you? It'll be like missing your front teeth. Everybody in this town, and I guess everywhere else in the USA, has a soft spot in his heart for the old lady in the harbor. Holding the fort year in and year out. Standing there with a torch in one hand and a book in the other. Looking out to the ocean like a queen. <laughs> My kids are going to miss her. Your children? Do they know her? Sure thing. Say, they even know that poem she wrote, or somebody wrote, to come with her. Funny, if you'll pardon a stray remark, that statue lady had on a hat, same style like yours, with any of them points. Really? Oh, uh, young man, could you drive me to some historic place I might visit? Oh, we're heading toward Grant's tomb, lady. It's kind of a nice sort to us. 
Perhaps for a stranger it might have its moments. Would that be Ulysses S. Grant? On the nose. Imagine going through life with a first name like that. Hello. Mr. Grant? Are you at home? Oh, there you are. Wake up. Wake up. Uh, 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 oh, the pack. Close your edge. Uh, uh, hooray for the union and ableism. Mr. Grant, you will bring the police. Where, where am I? Oh, don't tell me I'm still on Riverside Drive. Yes, you are. And who are you, my good lady? I don't think we've been properly introduced, have we? We were a long time ago. Very long time ago. You wouldn't be that Jenkins girl I met in Virginia in 1865. No. You were present at my unveiling in New York Harbor in 1883. Now do you remember? Well, turn my left flank if it isn't the Statue of Liberty. Looking as pretty as ever. little tarnished, but considering your long exposure, pretty as ever. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Oh, shucks. Now you just call me Ulysses. How have you been all these years, Ulysses? Oh, well enough, I reckon. Gets a bit damp down here in the winter. Oh, why don't you go outside? Outside me? Yes. That's why I came. I thought it would be nice for us to take a walk about the city together. I want to see what's going on behind my back, Ulysses. I keep looking out to see you all the time, and sometimes I wonder if the people behind me are the same, if they're still worthy of the torch I hold aloft for them. The world has changed before my eyes, those... Giant ships and those wonderful silver planes flying over me. But I want to believe the people haven't changed. That I'm still their Statue of Liberty, guarding their harbor and their future. Oh, yes, sir. My, the fresh air is wonderful. Say, now, the first thing we might do, ma'am, is to step across the street into that bar. Well, perhaps just one little drink, Ulysses, but later. Say, now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Uh, <clears throat> looks like a young couple over on the park bench, boy and girl spooning. Come on, let's listen. Well, but we still have a lot to do, Ulysses. Oh, I got a hankering to see what the country's up to in boy and girl tactics. Now, come on. Come on now. It won't take a minute. And so, Mary... The way I see it, there's a job to be done. It won't be long. And then... And then? We'll get married like we planned. Oh, Tom. Tom, you will be careful, won't you? Oh, there's nothing to worry about, honey. <laughs> I'll bring back the Mikado's pearl-handled sword just for you. <laughs> Mary. Yes? Oh, Mary. Come on, Ulysses. They wouldn't like us too much. Yeah, the old arm maneuver hasn't changed a bit in over 50 years. Imagine, Ulysses, all these women operating thousands of machines. Looks like a woman's place isn't in the home anymore. Pardon me, miss. How long have you been working here? Almost a year now. And what do you make at your machine? Bullet casing and shell casing. And I kiss them all for good luck. What about your family? Well, my two children run the house fine. My husband's in the Navy. I'm backing him up right here at the bench. Hard work. Yes, not too clean, but there's a war to win. And it's everybody's war. Say, if you're one of them reporters, you can tell them the women of America are putting aside their fancy clothes for the duration. <laughs> I'd like to enroll with the Red Cross. I haven't much time, but I can give two days a week. The quota for our club girls is 500 bandages a day. I'm the air raid warden, ma'am. I just wanted to be sure you're clear on your instructions about what to do in case. Of course, I'm playing at the theater every night of the week, but Sundays I wash dishes at the theater wing canteen. Sorry, Bill, no poker tonight. Gotta get out to Long Island. Tonight I stand my turn as an airplane spotter. No gas on Wednesdays or after 7 at night, buddy. We gotta conserve, see? Gas is ammunition. Hey, what's holding up the line? Come on, pal. Our money's hot. Hey. There's the line, miss. All the way down the hall. It's the same every payday. The men wait for hours to buy war bonds. I see. 1875 on the nose. 
Say, haven't you got a bond with a different picture on it? What's the matter with George Washington's picture? Well, we got the bonds pinned up on the wall. The kids are yelling for one with a Lone Ranger on it. <laughs> on your horse, bud. I know, Silver. Do you buy a bond every week, mister? Sure thing. Does the management force you to do it? Force us? <laughs> That's a new angle. Like forcing a man to breathe free air. You don't have to force a man to do anything once he knows what the score is. And we know. Sure, we'll give our money all they need. And if that isn't enough, we got our lives to give. Big talk, maybe. But there are big things at stake. Mighty big things. Well, Ulysses, here we are back on Riverside Drive, nice and peaceful. Yeah, my feet are a bit tired, but I hadn't had so much fun since I got my new teeth. Times have changed, though. But the people haven't changed, Ulysses. All of them we spoke to still believe in themselves. They're still strong and sure. Miss Liberty, I'm a man of few words. I kind of took a fancy for you today. Neither of us is getting any younger. Will you marry me? No, no, Ulysses. I have to go back to my home in the harbor. I want to return now, gladly. I want to go back to my pedestal because I know things are safe behind my back, that I hold the torch for a strong, proud people. They remind me a little of those hundreds of thousands who long ago passed me in their ships, kneeling, believing I was a strange new god. And now I've seen the sons of those fathers and heard their voices. We are the little people, handling big things. Big planes and ships and buildings, handling big words such as... Four score and seven years ago, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and all the unvoiced passion of free men. Add us up. We equal 130 millions, roughly. Owning 32 million cars, roughly. And frigidaires and radios, and things more important than what we own. We came here green as grass, painted the town red, panned gold, crossed mountains, struck it rich, went broke again, built cities, let the cities go to dust. We got here on the old slogans, never give a sucker an even break. Go west, young man, 5440 a fight, I'm starving to death on my government claim. We're the people, sober on Sunday with a Saturday night hangover, trying again and again, following justice like a voice in the night, listening to the wrong voices often, slugged but never slain. We're always around. We don't know what the score is all the time, but we're learning all the time. We're ready, you will say, ready with arm and a heart, and the song that beats in our blood. My country, tis of thee. You're tired, you're poor, you're huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. America, God bless it. To all Americans at home, your call has gone forth. Have you answered it? The war bond quota call is your call to the service. Draft your bonuses, your overtime pay, your salary, your dividends and profits for war. Every state, every city and county has a quota call it has to meet. Let's meet it like Americans everywhere. We must. We will fill our quota by buying war savings bonds. Ten percent of our total income, ten percent of your entire income, must go into United States war savings bonds. This is your country. Keep it yours. 